you know, if you're selling over the phone, you're probably at home, okay? So instead of traveling an hour and a half to go to your first appointment, you travel like 30 seconds downstairs to your office, put your headset on and start calling. So there's a lot less time to just start the business model. You're starting the business model at home in your area and your where you live, and you can start selling right away without the time to not just get there, but to come home. So there's an absolute efficiency mark, uh, uh, argument to be made there. Also, you're just sitting there constantly doing outbounds or taking inbound calls. Um, most of our agents for insurance group do outbound calls where we you get leads, you make outbound calls and make the process happen. Um, but there's a process of which you can do this over and over again. And um, you're in control and you're always prospecting, always attempting to get people to pick up the phone. You're always doing sales-based activity. Whereas if you're selling or, the, or selling in person, you got that windshield time thing, you know, and you, you can't really do much while you're driving, okay? um, except like listen to motivational tapes or YouTubes or my YouTube channel. You should listen to my YouTube channel, of course. But other than that, what else are you going to do with your time, right? So with telesales, you can spend that time in a proactive sales orientation that you ne necessarily can't get with face-to-face, -face. Um, which leads to another benefit, more presentations. You can talk to more people over the phone than you can face-to-face -face all day long. When you're really good on the phone and you can get people into conversations and get past some of that initial resistance, which is a little higher with telesales, we'll get to that in a minute, uh, you can have more total talk time and conversations than the guy or gal who's selling in person. So arguably, more presentations leads to the more potential of more sales, right? So there is that potential. If your system's set up the right way, you got enough prospects, enough leads to talk to, that you can get a lot more out of it, arguably, potentially. The other benefit is that you're at home. Again, you don't have to travel anywhere. You don't have to go see weird people. You just get to talk to weird people. <laughs> you get to stay at your home. There's a sense of safety out of it. Um, a lot of people want that. It's also a business model that you can take on the road. Uh, there are people who sell final expense that maintain a residency in the States, but they live internationally. Uh, one of our agents is going down to Argentina to live uh, for whatever reason, and he's going to maintain a residency in the States, but he's going to sell out of Argentina because that's just where he wants to go. Another agent of mine, Oscar, is going back to where he was from originally, uh, Bogota, Colombia. Uh, he's traveling there, going to be there for a couple of months and uh, lives in Florida, uh, but he's going to sell over the phone while he's there, and he can. So it, it, the telesales model, what's cool about it is it, it allows for a lifestyle-oriented business. You're not relegated to the immediate geography to go sell. Like where I live in Chattanooga, if I'm face-to-face, -face, I got about an hour and a half radius around Chattanooga that I can work and be home every day. But with telesales, it's worldwide. So you can live out, in a sense, arguably, a lifestyle-oriented business where you can live where you want, travel where you want, and still have the ability to make sales because what the insurance rules dictate is the insurance that you sell, it only matters where the client is located and whether or not you have a non-resident license in that state, not where you're currently located. So if I'm selling, if I'm in Australia and I'm over there, right, you know, uh, boxing kangaroos when I'm not on the phone selling, uh, and I'm selling somebody in Georgia. I can be in Sydney making clo closing deals in Georgia, the state, as long as I got a non-resident license. And I can do that all day long. So it's a cool thing you can't do with face-to-face. -face. It, it gives you a level of freedom and mobility that you otherwise couldn't get with face-to-face. -face, okay? So those are the big advantages of telesales. So let's talk about some cons, some drawbacks. Because, there, again, there are a lot of people out there who are saying, telesales is the only way to do business or telesales is superior. And again, you know, uh, consider the source. A lot of these influencers or people recruit and build strictly to telesales. They don't do face-to-face. -face, so they're biased. I I'm telling you my bias is up front. We do both. So I'm well aware of the cons and the pros of each. And, you know, as far as your concern, as you'll discover, there are opportunities with both and you need to know both sides to make a good, uh, um, balanced uh, decision. So the drawbacks of telesales is that we talked about the trust issue face-to-face, -face, right? Remember the trust issue, if you see people face-to-face -face, that you kind of trust you when you're over the phone, that is now an impediment. People don't know who you are. 
Because when you're doing final expense, you're doing outbound calls that are based off of filling a form out. You haven't built a brand. There's no brand appeal that has built your reputation up to it. There's some things you can do with some self-generation and some drip campaigns prior, but it doesn't elevate the call quality that much, I would argue. So you start off at a disadvantage, I think, from a trust standpoint on the phone than you do in person for the average agent and the average client that you see. So you're going to, because of the trust issue, have a lot of issues more often than not than you would selling face-to-face, -face, one of which is objections. You will hear more objections selling over the phone, even if you're good, than you will in person. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, you'll get a lot of, of resistance on the phone in the beginning of the call more often than you would if you door knocked or just set a simple appointment. People are pushing back. They don't want to go into a phone call with you. They'll give you all sorts of excuses. Again, we teach in our agency strategies to overcome this, but it provides a level of extra resistance that you have to overcome to be proficient at telesales. You're going to get a lot more objections at the end of the call uh, regarding banking information and social security. Because, and, and look, there's objection rebuttals to those things. There's ways we can handle those that work. But the crux of the social security and the banking objections that you get to like collect that information from the client, it's based off of a lack of trust. They don't quite believe you or they're worried about something. And I think that tends to be more inherent as, as a not a bug of the system, but a feature. It's just normal uh, in a telesales model. And again, you got to get good at overcoming those. You have to have like what our agent said the other day, a good word track to overcome those objections. But more importantly, you have to be um, intentional about building trust and likability over the phone much, much more than you do face-to-face -face, uh, because that's where the real core of those pushbacks and objections come from. There are less replacements uh, over the phone sales and face-to-face. -face. One of the things that helps face-to-face uh, -face agents uh, close more deals, especially if you're a broker, okay? If, you're, if you like work with us, we're not married to one company. We're going to have a collection of carriers you work with. That allows you to go out there and shop for the best combination of price and coverage for your client. Having options and going in the home, we're able to actually lay hands on the policies our clients have. And one of the things many of our clients or agents say is about three-fourths of the time, if a client already has coverage, what they think they have isn't what they have. There are countless examples on our winner's board that we share uh, on our uh, agent site where agents say, hey, this, a this client said she was fine. I got in anyway with your scripting and training. And lo and behold, the policy they had was a load of garbage. I was able to get a replacement on that, sell an even bigger policy. And the client is thrilled because it's a better deal. Having that happen over the phone is a lot harder to accomplish. What you will find with most telesales arrangements, what you're doing is writing coverage for the first time or potentially uh, um, adding more coverage on to what the client already has. So you're not going to have the opportunity nearly as much to replace inferior policies with better selling over the phone and in person. Because why it's like, for some reason, again, maybe it's a trust factor. Maybe it's because you can't actually look at what the client has uh, like you could physically. You, you're not going to be able to review the policy as nearly as often. And so what that ultimately means is you, you don't have the ability to reason with the client say, hey, you see what you said you had, look at what you actually have and look at the problem with that. And what the outcome of this is, is you don't have what you think you do and I can do better and help you with something. So there's less conversions because of that. And uh, that partially contributes to why you're not going to close as much over the phone as you will in person. Okay. So cons here, difficult uh, and and this is the and this is and let me let me wrap that cons up here because of all of these difficulties the truth about telesales is that it is a more difficult style of business to do for the average agent telesales is not as simple at, for the average person to do as face to face is with face to face there's just something about being there in person seeing the client in the flesh making eye contact that puts the client at more ease and as the numbers bear out, converts more of those presentations into purchases. Whereas with telesales, you've got the distrust issue 
And uh, you also, good telesales people have to be very scripted, but not just good at reading and following discipline in a disciplined fashion, what the script says, but performing the script. You really have to be an actor uh, and have that mentality of being an actor on stage, performing to everybody, um, to the people in the front row, to the back row, because all you have to de depend on is, is the voice coming out of your mouth that goes into the phone and how that's perceived on the other end. They can't see you. They All those things that help contribute to lowering their defenses, you don't have that. And it's just harder to teach. Less agents are successful selling telesales because of